Okay, well, why don't we get started? It's a one or two minutes early, uh, but there's a lot that I want to try to cram in in 20 minutes. Uh, so good morning again. My name is Ian Hameroff. I'm a senior program manager at, at part of the Office 365 Information Protection Team. Uh, my lovely assistant, Goggin, will be here any moment. Got stuck in a little bit of traffic on the way back from the hotel, so, uh, but the good news is I've got everything covered here. The other good news is we're only going to be able to scratch the surface in uh, talking to you about how you can more easily secure your email using some new investments we've, we're, we're unveiling here at Ignite uh, to, within Office 365 and in partnership with Azure RMS uh, to secure and encrypt your email. Uh, there's a session this afternoon at 4 p.m. I have uh, the session title and the details in the last slide of this deck. Uh, where Goggin and I will go into a 75-minute deep dive into all this. So if for any reason we go really quickly here uh, and you want to learn more, uh, that's your best bet is to attend that session this afternoon at 4 p.m. So with that, just by a quick show of hands, how many of you know or use, know what it is or use IRM? How many of you use OME? How many of you use RMS? How many of you have no idea what any of those three acronyms mean? All right, good. It's okay to admit it. That's why we're all here. So, so rights management services, information rights management, Office 365 message encryption. These are a number of different technologies that we have built into Office 365, built on top of the Azure RMS platform with the goal of helping you protect and safeguard your sensitive documents and, and email communications that flow through Office 365. And you know, when you think about email encryption and, and protecting those sensitive communications, there really is no shortage of motivations to start thinking about that today. Uh, whether it's the large number of high profile email hack attacks that have taken place and are making headlines uh, seemingly every week or so, whether it's the ever evolving requirements for you to achieve privacy or a regulatory, a regulatory compliance, uh, again, protecting what gets communicated through email is ever more important. And adding to the complexity of the challenge is the fact that in a cloud mobile world, the border of where your data and information sits is no longer the, the edge of your firewall. It really is just about everywhere. So again, no real shortage of reasons to protect your sensitive information in email. And while email encryption has been around for a long time, this is not breakthrough, uh, and it's been there to help mitigate this risk for, for many, many years, you've certainly shared with us there are a number of challenges you have faced in your efforts to try to implement email encryption at scale with all your users and all the people with which you communicate. First, you've told us, hey, this is pretty complex to set up. There's a lot of moving parts. Uh, and once you do get it set up and have all the apps and keys and stuff uh, implemented and deployed, uh, you often hear from your users it's difficult to use. You've also shared that, hey, encrypted email often is an inconsistent experience from what we've been doing for decades. Type up something and click send. Usually on the recipient end, there's something different they have to go through. For the sender, there may be extra steps they need to take to add that extra layer of protection. And in some cases, those extra layers of protection may be incompatible with the devices or the email apps that you or your users or your recipients are trying to use. And last but not least, your users may not always know why or when to use email encryption. Uh, I think we put a lot of burden on, on our users to do the right thing. And in most cases, those users are trying to do the right thing. But we're asking them to do things that are extra and above and beyond what is normally done when they write any other type of email message outside of the ones that have higher sensitivity. So today at the Ignite conference, we want to share with you how we're hoping to attack and address a lot of these pain points you shared with us around email encryption. The value proposition we want to land is secure email that works across all the devices, apps, applications that you use and with anyone you with, wish to reach, whether those folks are inside your organization, where today if you use IRM inside your organization or inside your Office 365 tenant, you know, it works fairly well. 
but that often breaks down if you try to do the same thing with people between organizations, with your business partners. And what's even more challenging is if you try to do the same to reach your customers who may not be using a commercial mail service like Office 365, who may be on Gmail, who may be on Yahoo Mail or Outlook.com. So our goal here really is about making it seamless and easy for you to have your users protect mail and most importantly ensure that the recipients can receive and read and respond to those mails without any additional friction. So how are we doing that? Well, Office 365, together with the Azure Information Protection Team, have combined to make a, a number of significant investments. First, we want to remove the complexity of getting started. If you've tried to use Information Rights Management or IRM today in Office 365, you may be aware that there's a bunch of steps you need to go through to wire it up and have it start working for you. We're going to remove that complexity by automatically enabling it for all customers. We're also going to add support for BYOK. Many of you have given us feedback that, hey, I'd really love to use this, but I'd like to have my own key materials be used to help protect these messages versus the Microsoft issue key. Well, very shortly, that's something that you'll have available for yourself as well. Secondly, in terms of attacking whether and how and when to protect messages, we want to make it simpler for you and your users to either manually protect a message or where we believe a lot of this will take place is automatic protection. Let's use the power of intelligence and the service and things like data loss prevention to identify through content inspection what is sensitive and what's not, you know, really taking that burden off of your users. And the only way we can deliver on that promise is in the third area of investment which is about ensuring that if you do automatic protection or one of your users manually presses the protect button, that you can have high confidence that the recipients of these messages can actually read them, probably the most important part of it. So there's a number of investments that we're starting to, to talk about today, and there's many more coming. Uh, we talked a little bit about automatically setting up RMS. If you're already familiar with IRM and OME, what I'm about to demonstrate in a moment is really taking the best of IRM and combining it with the reach of OME uh, into a single solution. And that includes working between Office 365 tenants, uh, as well as reach scenarios like in B2C or those who are not hosted in Office 365 or on the Office platform. A value proposition we want to make for you here today that, hey, if you use Outlook, it's just going to work. There's no need to install additional apps or go through additional steps. Imagine like, the ease of use that can be there when your users use a familiar app like Outlook, whether it's on their desktop, Mac, or their mobile device, that they can send and receive uh, protected mail without any change in the way they get things done. And there's many more things here that uh, we can talk about, but I thought the best thing to do would be to show some demos. So in this case, we're going to talk about three pain points that you've shared with us about the existing RMS or IRM or OME. One, you know, it only works inside my organization. Second one is it only works, it doesn't necessarily work with the mobile email app of my choice. And the third area is I don't necessarily think I can reach my customers who are not on Office 365 with protected messages. So let's take a look at how some of this will work. So here I'm logged into Contoso Corporation uh, as Garth, uh, who is a marketing director. And a very common scenario is as you're working on a new product launch, uh, you have sensitive information that you want to safeguard and protect, but you still need to work and securely collaborate with folks. So here's the press release we're about to send out in a few weeks' time. Uh, I'm going to include this new product project team Office 365 group, as well as adding Riley, who is a member of Woodgrow Media. He is in a different Office 365 tenant, so a different Office 365 customer, but it's super critical that he is participating in this because he's the PR consulting firm to help us make sure we're nailing uh, all the messages in this press release. And again, as the highlight aspect shows, because this is really sensitive and we don't want to have any leaks, I'm going to manually apply the do not forward policy and click send. Now, normally, if you would do this, folks within your organization should have no trouble reading that protected message. But if you hadn't already set up all those complex trusts and federation between Contoso and Woodgrove, Riley would have a very different experience. 
So let's switch over to Riley. And while we wait for the message to go through the internet, uh, it's important to note that part of the work that we're doing is removing the need to set up, set up uh, a ma uh, manually set up these trusts. And it's just going to be uh, implicitly there. And not too surprising, there in fact is the message from uh, Garth. Uh, and uh, even though we're in between two different tenants, the do not forward permission is, is noted here in the info bar. And in fact, if I do try to forward the message, uh, I'm unable to do so. Double clicking on the attachment, as you would hopefully ex expect, the same documents, just like the mail message, also have the uh, rights management protection on it, the encryption and the rights restrictions. And from here, I can see those permissions have been applied to Riley. And from here, Riley can very easily respond back and say, uh, this looks great. So just like that, we have now uh, uh, demonstrated how rights management can work out of the box, or whatever the moral equivalent of that is in the cloud, uh, between two Office 365 organizations. But another pain point you shared with us is the fact that uh, this doesn't necessarily work for all your users when they're on their mobile devices. And Jose, if we can switch to the iPhone, uh, I'd like to talk about Ali. Uh, she is a member of Contoso, so she works in the same organization as, um, as Garth. Uh, and when she's on the go, while we'd love everyone to use the Outlook mobile app, she much prefers the native mail app experience inside of uh, iOS. And in the past, if you tried to read a protected message using, say, like the native mail client in iOS or the Gmail client uh, on Android, many of you probably had that experience that you can't read the message. It says you have to install a bunch of apps and so on and so forth. To help address that, we're giving you a new option as an Office 365 tenant admin to switch on what we call server-side decryption and policy enforcement. Using the secure channel of EAS, unenlightened mail clients, or really clients that aren't aware of RMS, can still receive and respond back to protected messages. So in this case, here's that same protected message. And Ali received this message because she's a member of that Office 365 group. I can see the attachment. I also can see Riley's response. Uh, and because this message is different, and we have no way of having the native mail app inform Ali of that, just like you saw Riley had the, no the note uh, in Outlook that said, hey, do not forward. This is protected. We've added this little banner here that says, your company has protected this message at Office 365. Now, Ali can still be productive on the go. She can reply all and say, I'll take it from here and click send. But as you remember, this is a do not forward message. And if she, in fact, tries to forward that message, include the attachment, and because this is a little bit of salacious information, she wants to share it with her friend Sophia, who ha who's, who's outside the organization and not part of this, this mail thread, when she clicks send, Office 365 on the service side will enforce the policy. And in just a few moments, you'll see that Ali will get a message back from the service saying that she does not have permission to send this message. And in fact, the message is not sent. And again, here is this non-delivery report that explains that Ali does not have permission to send this message. So again, this is something that will be optionally available. And Jose, can we switch back to the, the other device? Uh, the, this is something that will be optionally available for you to turn on for your users syncing to your Office 365 client. Jose, can we switch back to number one? Thank you. And just to close this part of the demo, I want to show that here's that entire mail thread again. And even though we went B2B and we also had an unenlightened uh, native mail app in, the, in this communication, the whole time the, the protected message, uh, excuse me, the thread was protected even though all these different participants were here. So what do you think about that so far? All right. Uh, that's coming soon, yeah. We, a great question was, hey, that's out of the box today. What we're showing here today, we hope to have in a customer preview by the end of this calendar year and start rolling out early Q1 of next calendar year. At the end of the deck, uh, there's, there's some actions there if you'd like to be a participant in the preview program. So the last demo I want to show is that final pain point. 
reaching people who are not Office 365. And again, there are a lot of people out there who are on top of Office 365 and have this great fluid experience. But we also know that we need to communicate with customers and partners and those who may not be using Office 365. So in this case, as Garth again, I want to reach out to this freelance uh, uh, writer to see if she can help me with some marketing collateral for this upcoming launch. Now, Sophia is a single person, she, she's just, or a single company person. She doesn't have Office 365. She uses her Gmail account. Uh, and I, even though I am not manually protecting this message going to Sophia at her Gmail, because our company, Contoso, has crafted a data loss prevention policy that looks for sensitive terms uh, and things that could be uh, 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 bad if it leaks out, in this case, Project F, which is the code name of this new product release, when I click send, the service will automatically protect this message on my behalf. I didn't have to do anything. And again, the only reason why we can do that with high confidence is the recipient experience has to be fluid. So let's take a look at what that would be like for, for Sophia. So now I am switched over to Google Chrome, signed in as Sophia in her Gmail account. When I click uh, refresh, you see that message from Garth has come in. Again, if you've used IRM today and you try to send someone outside your organization an IRM, IRM message, you, you're probably familiar with the experience is, it is pretty jarring and it's not something that allows the recipient to quickly read and respond to the message. Well, here's the new experience we're providing. A new uh, cleaner message, we're gonna allow you to customize it, for example, put your company logo here and some other things. Uh, because Google Chrome and Gmail is not RMS aware, it doesn't know how to decrypt this native message attachment. This is another IRM mail. This is not like OME, which you may be familiar with, is a completely different solution that uses HTML attachments that have to be posted back to the service, blah, blah, blah. Instead, this same message is what you would normally see for any other IRM message. The difference here is we've now added this new temporary web view link for those who are not on devices that are RMS aware. Say, for example, uh, Sophia was syncing her mail in the Outlook client for iOS. That's an RMS aware uh, app, and it would be able to render the message just like you saw for Ally and for Riley, uh, or Riley and Garth more appropriately, in Outlook and Outlook on the web. So when I click on this, it's gonna show off another set of investments we're doing, and that is integrating with the most common uh, federated identity providers. In this case, we know that, uh, that Sophia is coming from her Gmail account, and as such, we're giving Sophia the option to sign in using her Google account, or she can still use a one-time passcode if she ch chooses not to. When I click on sign in or tap on sign in with my Google account, uh, this is probably a familiar screen if you've ever gone to other online properties that allow you to sign in with Google or Twitter or Facebook or MSA. Here, I have to do a one-time consent saying I'm going to allow Office 365 the most basic details about my information. When I click allow, in just a few moments, uh, we'll see the message render inside of a web viewer. And the most important thing here to look out for is you can now actually send a do not forward message to someone in Google and have it enforced. And as you can see here, it actually is grayed out. I can see the message is uh, restricted. Uh, and right from here, I can very easily respond without having to take too many extra steps. In fact, the next time I receive a message back from Garth, when I just click on that link, it goes fluidly right through to uh, the message without any additional steps. Pretty cool? All right. So I think we're almost at time, which is great uh, because there's just a few call to actions for you for the rest of today and, and, and going forward. One, a big part of the secret sauce behind here is Azure RMS, and my good colleague uh, Goggin is, is my partner in crime on the Azure IP team. Uh, we we want to rec strongly recommend that you start thinking about migrating or enabling Azure RMS, particularly as it lays a foundation if you're interested in doing things like BYOK. The second thing is we do have a customer preview that's coming up uh, before the end of this calendar year. And if you're interested in joining it and seeing this as well as the other investments we're making uh, over the next uh, three to six months, uh, just simply send us an email at protect email preview 
at Microsoft.com. Again, if you were here earlier, I put my docs.com uh, link to this deck. You can get that email address from there. And then lastly, as you start seeing how these things evolve and how we're removing a lot of the major hurdles that have existed for some time to protect messages using email encryption, really start thinking about applying this to your environment, whether inside your org, between business partners, uh, and most importantly, with the customers and folks you, you collaborate with outside the organization. And just to close, there are a number of sessions that are really applicable and relevant here. The one I mentioned earlier is the one that Gagan is leading later today and that he and I will be deeper diving into this and more investments. And that is BRK2128 this afternoon uh, in, in Building C202 and 204. There we'll spend 75 minutes and there's even some more things to show in there. So with that, I want to thank you for your time this morning. I really hope you're walking away feeling excited about the investments we have here and enjoy the rest of your time here at Ignite. Thank you.